herbicide and sure power herbicide. You see the graphics in the booth and that's really what we want to talk about here for a few minutes. This is an exciting new herbicide that we have to offer for folks into the industry, especially designed for the lawn care industry, looking at really tough to control weeds. This is some data here that we're looking for at some of our research trials. This is some work that was done at Ohio State. Overall, you can see the ground ivy control. That's gonna be the one thing with this herbicide, and there's some pictures, or actually some plants that I've already sprayed just four days ago with ground ivy over here. And, you know, if you take a look at these, you know, it, it's pretty amazing. I mean, the level of control that you see on ground ivy even four days after application with this herbicide is really unprecedented. I mean, the speed of activity, the control, the thoroughness. So that's going to really shine with this herbicide. You can see the activity on the wild violet as well. So again, a herbicide that's really going to stand out as far as the speed of activity that it has as well as the effectiveness that it has on some of these most difficult to control weed. So anybody help me out with this weed? Harold, you might be able to know it. It's, especially in the spring, kind of a uh, 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 chickweed. So this is a chickweed. So common chickweed. So it's a really common weed that you're going to find a lot of times in the spring. Overall, our three ways are, are not real strong on this particular weed. You take a look at it right after an application. This is in February application. So a single February application of Sure Power. You start to see this off color even within 24 hours of the application. You come back even three days after that application you see this type of activity. So it's not only just some of the weeds that we have out on display, but it's a broad spectrum as far as some of these weeds that this product is really effective on as far as the speed of activity and, and the level of control you can see. This is another picture from a summer application. Anybody here have problems with spurge? So it's a summer weed, right? It's one that pops up a lot of times. Late summer, what are you gonna do for something like spurge? You know, another weed that this herbicide is going to be really effective on. You'll see good knockdown again one day after application. And a little bit right here, anybody help me out a little bit what we're seeing? It's a little bit of crabgrass in there. So we're seeing some activity on our crabgrass as well as our, our broadleaf weeds with this product. So it makes it really unique. And that's the one thing I want to say about Sure Power again is the uniqueness. It's not only the speed, the spectrum, but the activity that this material has. You know, some other really difficult to control weeds here, we're looking at a thistle. All these pictures were taken just a week after the application. Okay, so Canada thistle, common milkweed, perennial sow thistle. So these are all deep-rooted perennial weeds. Again, just a week after the application where you're seeing this level of activity, really unprecedented in the marketplace. The other one then that kind of shines out, again, I have some examples over here, is violets. That's one of the things to keep in mind with violets is there's a number of different species out there. And that's what a lot of people, I think, struggle with. Is that each of these have their own little nuances as far as the time of application and really what to really tackle these with as far as some of our herbicide choices. And what we've done with Shirt Power is just trying to make it really easy for you really target a lot of times our one fluid ounce per thousand square feet rate so really a rate that works well and then have strong activity again we kind of mentioned this but it is a four-way herbicide so what we've done is really taken our best active ingredients our best four active ingredients and make a herbicide that's highly active we've taken triclopyr, here here, put that with 2,4-D and flumioxazin, which is new to the turf industry, put these four actives together and really came up with a, what I call a hammer, a, a herbicide that's really active. Again, it brings you two modes of action, so you're coming at control from two different directions, which is great for resistance management type program. I will say though, this is only labeled for use in cool season turf, okay? So your ryegrass, bluegrass, as well as uh, Kentucky, Kentucky bluegrass is any of the fescues, so tall fescue, fine fescues as well. Um, it is, even though a very herbic a herbicide that's very active, it does only have a caution signal. Something else that you'll notice with this formulation, it's kind of white in color, uh, easy to mix up overall, uh, has really what I call low odor, and then overall our intended use sites is really anything turf, from parks to sod farms, residential lawns, golf courses, even railroads. So if it's got a turf area, really we feel like we're covered with this particular herbicide. So a few more pictures to give you some examples of what to expect with the Sure Power application. 
Here we're looking at some orchid at Ohio State. Again, kind of a mixture of weeds, but overall a lot of ground ivy in there. We see even just 10 days after that application, really strong activity again in our trial work over a wide range of weeds. So it's not just our ground ivy and wild violet. You know, it's dandelion, it's clover, it's the weeds that you would suspect that most of our post-emergent herbicides are going to control. This product controls as well. Again, kind of moving into some trial work that we've done recently at, at Michigan State. Again, focused here on our wild violet. And violet is very interesting in that what you see is generally this, this trend where even two, three, four days after the application, just like over here with our plants, it's what I call about 60% control. Okay, but with violet, it's a little bit different than the ground ivy that you can see is virtually dead just a couple days. It does keep building as far as the level of control for several weeks. Here we're looking even at 30, 39 days. So really almost five weeks out, we're still seeing that control level go up. For sure power, for most of our traditional power products, in this case it's a speed zone or a T-zone, some of those type of products, you see the level of control a few days after the application, generally by four weeks they're gonna be outgrowing. Right, that's generally what we see a lot of times is regrowth, especially with triclopyr alone products or heavily weighted triclopyr products, you're gonna see regrowth of our violence. Okay, again, you're gonna to continue to see this go down over a period of time. And again, some pictures here from some of the work that we did. This is some work that I conducted, even just three days after, just sort of like those plants. You're gonna get those leaves that are really starting to bronze, starting to go down, just a couple of days after that application. So you take a look at this research, and this is combined over some work that I did last, last year where I sprayed every Saturday for six Saturdays in a row from the end of August, all through September and into October, so like this time of year. We're looking at just a couple of days, 60% and again, kind of a trend where it just continues to increase the level of control to well over 90% by a month after that application. So it's not going to be just what you see in a couple of days, it's going to continue to increase as far as the level of control, at least through that first four or five weeks after that application. And really when it comes down to it with violets and many of our other weeds, right, something like this, to what happened the next spring? Right? We can kind of see that we banged them up, but ultimately, was it very effective going into the next year? That's really what's important. So what we did here is rated all these fall applications the next spring. It really is about the first of May to go out there and take a look. And this is what it was looking like in these blocks of untreated area, where it was really heavy violet out there. You know, and you take a look at this, this is what the shirt power looked like the next spring. Am I going to say this is 100% control? No. If you take a look, there's a real small one here, there might be a couple in there, but awfully, awfully strong control. Okay, so from going to this, to something like this, with a single fall application of a product, we're excited. As you can tell, this is a different type of product. This isn't your standard three-way combination or even a four-way that might be out there in the market. If you look at some of the data from these fall applications, again, over these six timings, in the fall we were looking at a little over 90% control, but even 232 days later, the following spring, you know, over 80%. And I rate everything at 80% as a minimum acceptable. So this is a this is a true test. What did it really do? It did a really strong job with these fall applications. This is some this is some picture uh, that we're looking at from a May application. So let's say, you know, in this case, we wanted to make a May application, and then pictures here that we're taking about a month later in June. One of the things that might be a little bit difficult to see here, but we were seeing, again, this activity even on crabgrass, which was very surprising. Some of these summer applications here, even just three days after the application, so it was a May, an application was made on July 8th, to come back to July 11th when these pictures were taken. Look at this bronzing or little brown spots. This is activity that was showing on crabgrass. So this is a broadleaf herbicide, highly active, that also has some activity on annual grasses as well. So really as a summary with Sure Power, you know, it is new, it's exciting, it's very different than anything I feel in the marketplace today. You know, it has activity on some weedy grasses as well as, as broadleafs. You know, this is not our replacement for Escalade and some of our other products. You know, we have really strong herbicides in the market today. They all have their fit. They each do certain things really, really well. But this brings a different level of some challenging situations. You know, to me, it's a great tool to build on our portfolio, and that's what we've done with this product. 
And then again, I'll say a wide application window. You saw pictures of what it looked like in February. I'll say applications even into December that look really, really strong. So this is a product that you can really use to widen out our portfolio of products and really attack some of these problem weeds. And really what I want to say and leave you with is, you know, control the uncontrolled. That's what this product is designed to really provide a level of weed control, unlike other things in the market. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. I'll open it up. Is there any other questions or, or comments? Yeah. Does it kill? Be bees. Excellent question. So one of the things we all should be aware of is products that, you know, pollinators that are out there. And it's a great question as far as our, our attitude and, and confidence with this material around bees is that it could easily be applied around bees and it's not toxic to bees. So that's something that you wouldn't have to worry about with this material is have direct contact with the bee and have death. That would not be an issue. Yes? How many tiller uh, control do you have on the crabgrass? So crabgrass is one that we're still learning about. I'll say right now we have kind of seen this uh, phenomenon where it has really strong activity on small one, two leaf crabgrass as well when it starts to get a little bit larger. Uh, so that's really what we have right now is that I'll say it has activity kind of along across the board, but almost like a quinclorac when you think about it. Really good kind of early, uh, a little bit late. But, you know, crabgrass is one I look at more as a bonus. The nice thing about it is you don't have to tank mix something with it to see some setback of that. You know, it's still, a, I'm going to say, is our focus is going to be tough to control broadly with activity on grasses as well. The other one I'd like to mention is sedges. Now, sedges, on the other hand, especially yellow nut sedge, we see really strong activity by itself. So my suggestion to people is not to put something else with it for sedges. Let the sure power go on its own. And then if you do happen to see some regrowth, which we haven't been seeing, but if you did, then you could come in with something like a Solero or a Pro Sedge to clean that up. Any other questions? Is it an ester or a mean? So the question was, is it an ester, is it a mean? So what we've done with this material is all the 2,4-D, the triclopyr, and the fluoxapyr are all esters in this product. Uh, but with this formulation, again, one of the things we're going to find is very unique, right by the caution word, is, is that it is a caution. Right? Most esters that you think in the marketplace, a lot, or a lot of them at least, are more uh, more aggressive for it. Uh, and also are going to contain a little higher signal. So it's a, it's a formulation, again, the, the volatility you'll also notice as far as the smell, the odor is quite low with this material as well. Temperature-wise? Temperature-wise, right now I'll say that the uh, restriction is, it is, it's a warning of anything over 80 degrees. We see that with our esters that you do need to be you know, aware of, that it is ester formulations. I will say I'm on the research side. We're making a label submission right now to increase that up based on what we've been seeing as well and continue to do more volatility work. But it's a really nice, stable formulation that we don't see volatility like traditional esters. As far as being out right now, yes, we uh, obtained federal registration this last February, and then the samples started to go out in the field in July of this year, and people have been uh, having an opportunity to take a look at it and going real well. Yeah. So, I remember when Imprellas came out. Yeah. Uh, what is, so, is there restrictions on drip line and rain? And Excellent, excellent question. You know, one of the things about introducing a product that's more effective than some of the things that are on the marketplace is how about plant safety? Especially went through the whole Imprella situation where you had tree death in a lot of cases. This is a herbicide where the fourth component, even though it's the first time it's been used in turf, has been used around ornamentals and landscape beds for years. It's not translocated, it's not moved in the roots, it doesn't have root activity or root uptake. So it's a product that has real foliar activity, you just don't have to worry about that. So we can use it at very high rates, right around tree rings and things like that, have no problems with trees. So we feel very comfortable with this product. You know, you're not going to have to worry about off-target or movement or leaching through them and having some difficulty to ornament plants. Yeah. Are you guys getting into the 2,4-D and dicamba acid formulations? 2,4-D acid and and dicamba formula. So with this, this is a material, again, I think one of our strengths is it's dicamba free. So that's been one of the things out in the marketplace. And then as far as 2,4-D, again, we have this as the 2,4-D ester, which we start with an acid a lot of times that 
we see broken down in the plant. But in this particular case, we have an ester formulation uh, for our 2,4-D. Again, what, one of the things that we've done with this product is that it isn't in the acid form, but we see we actually have a little reduced rate of our 2,4-D in there really from the activity that we see with the other combinations. So it's something that we've really tried to focus on with this product is to have a combination with all the actives at rates where we see issues such as volatility not being such an issue. Dicamba free, our rate of 2,4-D in some cases is reduced because of the activity we're getting as a whole combination. Yeah. Bottom line, stay price competitive. Price competitive. This is a really good question. Anybody want to address that, Jamie, real quick? The price competitiveness of SurePower. Price competitive. Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's under $25 an acre. Very price competitive, yeah. Okay, thank you. So to me, the price of this particular product for the level of weed control that you see is, is in all honesty phenomenal. I think we've really put something out there in the marketplace that makes it user friendly as well as in your pocket user friendly. It's very important. You know, we want to make sure you have success with it. And that's what we're all about with this. Any other questions? All right. Is this a, is this a yeah. competitive product with like a product like Battleship or is it has uniqueness. I mean, I think every product has its fit in the marketplace. Certainly a product like Battleship, you know, there would be some crossover potential with this product. But again, we're kind of focused on not one particular product, but really just trying to educate people that, you know, if you've got these target weeds, this is a good product and a good choice. All right. Well, thank you again, and make sure uh, you take advantage of some of the, uh, the giveaways that we have as well. Thank you.